Question three then from the 2022 advanced tire paper two, three marks, Euclidean algorithm. In fact, it's more than that. Use the Euclidean algorithm to find integers A and B to solve this Diophantine equation, as it's called. That's an equation that requires integers as a solution. Well, that's actually quite a lot of arithmetic just for three marks. Because you're going to have to go through the Euclidean algorithm just to find the biggest number that will divide into 87 and 634, the greatest common divisor. And then you're going to have to work that backwards to find A and B. Well, I may as well start it off. What's the biggest number that divides into them? Well, you've got 634. Well, the prime candidate would be 87. Does 87 divide into it? Because if it does, that's the biggest number. Well, how many 87s can you get in that? Well, 88, so it must be 7. 88 or 64. So that's 7 times it. You're going to have to multiply that out. Well, I suppose it's calculator paper, isn't it? Because you've got 49, 4, 609. 609 is going to leave you with a 25. Well, that's kind of spoilt it then, hasn't it? Because that means that 87 doesn't divide in, because that's not a multiple of 87, it's a multiple of 87 plus a bit. Oh well, well the next best choice would be what about 25? Could that be my candidate? Because if 25 obviously divides into itself, if it, if it also divides into this, then that would work. Well, let's test it. Does 25 divide into 87? Well, there's quite clearly three of them there, that's 75, but unfortunately that means you've got 12 left over. So it didn't. All right, well, is 12 my biggest number that will go in? Because obviously 12 goes into itself, will it go into 25? Let's test that. 25, no, that's two lots of 12. That's 24 and one left over. Well, now you've got it. It can only be one. That's a multiple of 12, but that's not. So you're down to a one, so that must be it. That means that the greatest common divisor of both of these numbers is just one. When it's just one, I mean, these numbers are called co-prime because there isn't anything that goes into both of them. Well, apart from one. Well, going through all of that to get the greatest common divisor of one is just one mark for all of that arithmetic. Now we've got to work backwards to find D and B. So starting with that one, so I'm going to start with this line here. I can rewrite, I'm just going to rewrite these in the reverse order now. So starting with this one, that one is equal to 25, take away two lots of 12. I'm just, that's not a decimal point. That's the, I'm just use that shorthand for multiplication here. Two lots of 25, uh, two lots of 12. Then I've got 12 here. I can replace the 12. I've got 25 minus 2 lots of, don't need a dot there if I've got a bracket, 87 minus 3 lots of 25. Now that can be tidied up because I've got bunches of 25. I've got one of them here and I've got plus 6 here. So that's 7 lots of 25 minus 2 lots of 87. Now, loads of arithmetic just for the one mark. Anyway. Now I can step back up to that 25. So instead of 7 lots of 25, I can say, well, that's 634 minus 7 lots of 87 minus the 2 lots of 87 I had already. But I can tidy that up. So I've got 7 lots of 634. Now that says you've got minus, that's minus 49. Minus another 2 is minus 51 lots of 87. But now you've got what you want. This says, what can make one? Well, one can be made by this number of those, but explicitly state them. So A would be seven, and B would be negative 51. Now, I missed out a mark there. You've got one mark for starting the reverse procedure of trying to get something that equals one. And you only get the final mark not when you finish that procedure, but when you explicitly state what A and B were, because that was the whole point of the question. State the values of A and B.